there is a popular saying in leadership that if you think you are leading and there is nobody following you, you are only going on their walk. On this platform, you are going to learn principles of leadership. You are going to encounter different leaders. You are going to learn about how you can grow as a leader, how you can make an impact. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the host for the leadership platform. I am a leadership coach, a lawyer by profession, a John C. Maxwell certified coach. I have been in corporate life in senior positions for several years and now I run the Center for Transformational Leadership where we train and coach leaders to become better leaders. And I invite you to go on a journey with us as we discuss the subject of leadership in the coming weeks. This and every Saturday, you have opportunity to ask questions, share your views on important leadership matters. Hi dear friend, my name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership and I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, if you can hear my voice, just type in the chat and say hi. Good evening. I can see uh, Catherine is here. Catherine, how are you? Excited to have you also uh, join the leadership platform. Um, Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Catherine can hear us. All right. So if you are joining us, please um, introduce yourself. Let's show some love. We will be happy to announce you to the world that you are here on the leadership platform. I can see Richard Asantiboche is here says hi hi richard we see you thank you very much ebenezer to four ebenezer thank you so much how is macron doing good evening so please go ahead and let's let's see you here let's announce you to the world once you are here 
George Aquabli Senior is here. Thank you, George. And uh, Ni Hansi Lotte. Hello, Ni. Thank you very much. We can see you. Um, please uh, introduce yourself and let's learn together. This evening, we are going to discuss a very important subject. And we may come back to this subject again with other leaders because it's such an important, important subject about uh, leadership and vulnerability. Um, I can see Theophilus Apia is here. Thank you so much, Theophilus Apia Wilson. Isaac Tete is here. Th Hello, Isaac. Thank you. Christopher Gavo is here also, so we can see Christopher. Now, we have grown to a culture where leaders are supposed to be strong. Leaders are not supposed to show any weakness. Um, in our particular culture where it's male dominated, we have different expressions about men shouldn't cry. And, you know, if a man cries, they will ask you, are you a baby? Um, so on and so forth. When a leader has challenges, they are not supposed to show that they have problems. Now, how is modern leadership uh, looking at this culture? Is the leader above human? How do you show your vulnerability? If you don't show your weaknesses, um, how do you get support? If you show your weaknesses, how are your team members going to uh, look at you? Are, are they going to support? Are they going to uh, believe in you? Would they trust you? Would the trust reduce or not? So this is a very important point. And leaders sometimes are at a, at a crossroad and, uh, and, and it's, it, they don't know what to do. So this evening, we are going to try to address it. And Catherine has already shared. He says, crying is a sign of strength, not weakness. That shows that we are going to have a good discussion this evening. So we're going to have our speaker speak to us for 30 minutes. And then we're going to have about 40 minutes to share your experiences, to answer your questions, to take your views on the subject. So this evening we have uh, Mr. Frank Asian. Actually, the, he should be Dr. Frank Asian, but uh, he hasn't had his graduation yet, so he doesn't want to go out and offend her, his uh, university, uh, David Linscon University in the U.S., where he's uh, currently finishing his doctorate degree um, in Doctor of of Ministry. Frank uh, calls himself the practical theologian. He has a master's degree in divinity from Abilene University, a master of biblical studies in Sunset Bible School. He's a psychologist from the University of Cape Coast, and he's dedicated his time mainly to ministry, particularly to young people. And, and when you are leading young people, and that's a, one of the reasons we want him to talk to us, because when you are leading young people with all their vulnerabilities, you're supposed to show strength, right? How do you lead these people and at the same time show that you are also human? And um, so he spent so much time uh, leading a uh, young student, and he leads the Church of Christ Church on campus, and every day he's dealing with these young people who have different issues from uh, academic to personal life to sexual life to so many other uh, situations that he has to deal with and get these young people, mold them to become better human beings. And so we're privileged uh, to have Frank uh, uh, with us. He's been doing also uh, lecturing um, um, at different universities currently, adjunct uh, lecturer at the Heritage Christian University in Accra here. 
So we are happy to have Frank start the discussion, share his thoughts, both academic and practical thoughts as a practical theologian, and uh, to introduce us to the subject of leadership and vulnerability and help us to understand how do leaders lead strongly and at the same time show that they are human. Frank, we thank you so much. And uh, Catherine, thank you for your comments. And uh, um, Catherine is looking very forward to your presentation. So uh, speak to Catherine and to me. Frank, thank you for the time. Brahim, th thank you for, for the invitation. I, I really ap appreciate the, the opportunity. We don't have so much time, and so I'll go ahead and and start with the presentation whilst I, I share uh, my screen and my slides so um, those online can um, follow the discussion. All right, so as, as has already been introduced, we are going to discuss leadership and vulnerability. And um, I would want to begin by asking um, this question. And if you will, please um, just type in your response in the comment section, and then we can have a, a discussion around it later on. So I want to ask you, those of us who are on the call, if you were asked to list some qualities of great leaders, what traits will make your list? And so just proceed with your comments and then we will talk about it. Um, I've not seen your comment and your, your list, but I am sure that vulnerability may not make it to the repertoire of leadership qualities. Most people do not think of vulnerability as a, as a positive trait of leadership. We think of vulnerability as, as counterintuitive when it comes to leadership. In other words, um, as Brahim indicated, people do not think that a leader should show any kind of vulnerability. Uh, vulnerability has a certain stigma attached to it. And so people do not... Um, associate vulnerability with leadership. Vulnerability is seen as, as a weakness. And um, when you talk to people about this con concept, their first uh, automatic thought about it is that if I show vulnerability, my, my team will think of me as a weakling and all sort of things. That, that's the notion we have about it. Um, the culture of bravery excludes vulnerability. When we think about a brave person, we don't associate that person with, with vulnerability. And so um, we would we'll, we'll have a discussion on it. Now, here is my purpose for, for this presentation. One, I want to challenge the traditional assumptions we have about, about vulnerability uh, as an undesirable leadership trait. Um, most, of, most of us will think that I'm trying to say that a leader must not show vulnerability. But that is not the tangent I'm, I'm going this evening. I want to challenge the general assumption, the traditional notion about vulnerability and the fact that it, it, is, not, it is not supposed to be associated with leadership. And so that's my first purpose. Two, I'm going to encourage leaders on this platform to embrace vulnerability as a leadership trait that increases a leader's currency of influence. My, my thesis, one of them is this, that vulnerability has the capacity of in, increasing your leadership currency. Now, what do I mean by leadership currency? Now, you know, we all know currencies. In Ghana, we have um, um, CDs. The U.S. has a dollar. But if people were to choose between a dollar and a CD, they would most likely go for the dollar because the dollar has high utility value and it is, it has, it is used all around the world. My point is this. When a leader is able to harness the leadership potential in vulnerability, in being vulnerable, that person is able to influence people, his team, more than somebody who finds vulnerability 
um, aversive. And so I am encouraging leaders to appreciate vulnerability because it has the potential of enhancing their influence and enhancing their effectiveness in, in, in whatever field of endeavor. My third purpose is to suggest that a leader's ability to be daring or courageous will never be greater than his or her capacity for vulnerability. I'm trying to suggest this evening that there is a positive correlation between courage and vulnerability, and that the, the road that leads to courage has vulnerability in the middle. In other words, you can never become a daring, courageous leader without learning how to be vulnerable. Specifically, vulnerability will make you a daring and a courageous leader. And so this, these are the purposes for which I'm making this presentation. Now, this will be the outline for, for our discussion this evening. I hope we have enough time. And so I would want to proceed by presenting the research basis of this, of this idea and then go ahead to define what vulnerability is. Because many people, when they hear vulnerability in leadership, they quickly go to the dictionary and find a lexical meaning. What we are presenting is an operational definition of vulnerability in the context of, of leadership and not the dictionary definition. And then we would, I would make the point that daring, courageous leadership has a positive relationship with vulnerability. I'll go ahead and share 10 consequences of lack of vulnerability in leadership and its effect on, on, on organizations and, and leaders. And then I'll suggest a few points in terms of practicing vulnerability. So let's go on. Now, um, a research was done featuring about 150 senior leaders um, who produced about 400,000 data for analysis in terms of the subject we are discussing. And so what we are saying is not some naive theory. It is a, a concept that is backed by empirical research. And this is the research question that, that um, drove the research. And so this is what the leaders were, were asked. What, if anything, about the way people are leading today needs to change in order for leaders to be successful in a complex, rapidly changing environment where we are faced with seemingly intractable challenges and insatiable demand for innovation. And so these 150 leaders were asked this question to suggest in their experience and in their um, in their leadership life, what they think is needed for the next level of leadership in this world that we are in now. And these are some of the results that emerge. The responses from these senior leaders, the consensus response was this, that we need braver leaders and more courageous cultures. In other words, for leadership to be able to move to the next level in terms of the changing nature of the world, in, ter in terms of the, the high demand for innovation, these leaders are suggesting that the world, the church, various facets of human endeavor need to have braver leaders and more courageous cultures. In other words, people should lead with courage. We must create a culture of courage in, in, in leadership. That is what they are saying. Now, this response was further distilled by further analysis. And this is uh, the point they came up with, that courage is a collection of four skill sets that can be taught, observed, and measured. And these are the four dimensions of courage. The first one is rumbling with vulnerability. And so when you want to know a courageous leader, that person has the capacity of facing and dealing with vulnerability. Two, that person has the capacity of living into his or her values. In other words, his actions, his thoughts are all motivated by his values. Third, braving trust. 
a courageous leader is able to trust again after being disappointed. That person is able to take a risk in terms of trusting people. And then lastly, learning to rise. A courageous leader does not keep on lying down when he falls down. He makes the attempt to rise up again after falling. And so these are the four dimensions of what um, a courageous leader looks like. Now, what is important in this research is this, that among all the four dimensions we have discussed, the research came to this conclusion that the foundational skill of courage building is the willingness and ability to rumbling with vulnerability. In other words, if any leader is able to build courage and become courageous, the foundational skill is how that person's de that leader deals with vulnerability. The research concludes that without this core skill, the other three skill sets become irrelevant. In other words, if you're unable to deal with vul your vulnerabilities and face them, you cannot brave trust. You cannot rise up when you fall and not leave out your values. And so dealing with your vulnerability is a critical skill set you need in order to be a courageous leader in this world. Our ability to be daring leaders will never be greater than our capacity for vulnerability. In other words, a daring leader, a courageous leader, has the capacity to be vulnerable. And this is an incontrovertible scientific fact that we must face, appreciate, and, and learn how to deal with. The true underlining obstacle to brave leadership is how we respond to our fear. Most people want to, most leaders want to sort of be intellectual with fear. They feel that admitting, accepting, and acknowledging their fears makes shows them off to be weak. But that is what is hindering your, your growth and your, your potential as a, as a leader, how you deal with fear. So the question is, how have you been dealing with your fears? Do you sort of wish them away? Do you diminish them? Do you uh, justify them? Or do you confront it head on? And so fear is what is keeping many leaders from being vulnerable. And that is what is sort of limiting them from hitting their highest potential. Now, I've been talking about vulnerability. Let's define what we are talking about. Let's define it. Now, according to, and most of the research I'm sharing is from Brainy Brown. He's a, a research professor and also a CEO of, of um, Daring Leaders Incorporated. And so he, she comes from a research background and also from a practitioner's background. And she defines vulnerability as the emotion that we experience during times of uncertainty during time of risk and during times of emotional exposure. And so we become vulnerable, leaders become vulnerable when they are uncertain about the next step to take, when they are risk that they must deal with, when they risk emotional exposure. What do we mean by emotional exposure? For example, if there is a situation you have to deal with, yet you do not have any idea and you said to your team, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. In this statement, you risk being exposing your emotions. In other words, your leadership or your team may think of you as a, as a weak leader, as an ignorant leader. And based on that impression, this statement may, may make in the minds of our team 
we would rather hide the fact that we don't have any idea. We don't want to expose our emotions so that people to, would see where we are at in relation to a, a particular issue we are dealing with. And so at that stage, we become vulnerable. Again, vulnerability is having the courage to show up with an open heart and mind to serve the team and each other and not our egos when you can't control the outcome. And so sometimes there is an issue you are dealing with. The outcome does not depend on you. What would you do? Somebody, a leader that does not want to be vulnerable would, would never show up because if he or she showed up and had nothing to say, nothing to show, and nothing to do, he risked an emotional exposure. He risked people, his team members, saying certain things about him. So he would either not show up at all, but a leader that is willing to be vulnerable would show up anyway and would com commandeer the resources available so that together as a team, they would find the outcome that is desirable. Lastly, vulnerability is coming to terms with the reality that as a leader, you may not have all the answers and solutions all the time and be comfortable reaching out to where the solutions may be. What is vulnerability? Vulnerability is saying, I don't know but I'm willing to find where the answers are. As a leader, are you willing to say that? Are you comfortable saying that? For most leaders, they have to feign and pretend and put up appearances just for people to believe that they have the answers, when in fact, they know they don't. But being vulnerable and saying, I don't know, I need help. Who can help us with this situation? What can we do for them? That is a no-no. That is a no-go area. And so that is vulnerability in the context of leadership. Now, Even though being vulnerable is counterintuitive to many of us, many leaders in our culture, in our political landscape, research suggests that daring leaders have the courage to be vulnerable. Leaders who are courageous, leaders who are daring, leaders who will be able to innovate, Leaders will, will be able to push the envelope and lead the organization, their churches, their families in uncharted waters, in novel situations, are those who have the courage to be vulnerable. Why? Because in a complex, rapidly changing world, leaders with the courage to be vulnerable are more likely to succeed. You see? In the world today, nobody prepared a leader for COVID. And so when a leader is faced with a novel challenging situation, the leader's ability to be vulnerable, to move outside of himself, to seek resources in terms of technology, in terms of human, is what would help the leader succeed. If you are faced with a, an intractable situation, which your training never prepared you for, and you are unwilling to be vulnerable, to move outside of yourself, to search for resources, to search for solutions, imagine what will happen to you. And not only to you, but to your organization and to the group that you lead. And so vulnerability frees us from our egos and allows us to pursue organizational goals, 
instead of personal comfort. And that is what makes a leader courageous. And that is what, and so vulnerability is the door that opens to innovation. Because you are able to get in touch with people, with individual, individuals, with resources that are not common to you and not may not be resident in your organization or in your personal skill sets. Let's move on. Lack of vulnerability is the biggest barrier to almost everything a leader seeks to achieve. If you don't want to be vulnerable and you rely on your, your own training, your own knowledge, which is limited, of course, beyond your natural capacities, what, what, what else can you achieve? Beyond the limited scope of your ability, what else can you achieve? And so when a leader is unwilling to be, to be vulnerable, he or she limits his or her organization's growth to only his capacity. If the leader has a weakness, it becomes the weakness of the organization. But if a leader becomes daring, if a leader becomes courageous and is willing not to serve his ego, but look outside, look beyond himself. He opens his organization up to limitless resources and potentials. So, you see, a leader that is unwilling to be vulnerable would never take on any continuous education opportunity because the leader is satisfied. It is what I call the arrogance of, of, of perfection, the illusion of perfection. But if a leader is able to be vulnerable to himself and say that there are so many things I don't know, and therefore I'll look out for opportunities to grow, to mature, the persons, the leader's organization grows with him because he is courageous to admit to himself and to be vulnerable to himself. And so know this, as a leader, the biggest barrier to almost everything you can achieve would be your lack of vulnerability. Now let 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 me let me rush through um, these ten consequences of a lack of leadership vulnerability, and I this is stated in the negative. And so, if you flipped the coin, it becomes a positive um, for the organization. If you decided not to do this, you would benefit from not doing it. So let's look at it in that way. Because of lack of vulnerability, leaders in organizations avoid tough and difficult conversations, which result in a lack of candor, honesty, and productivity, productive feedback. If a leader does not want to risk emotional exposure, if a leader does not want to, to step on any toes, Conversations that might that must be had, people that must be queried, questions that must be asked will remain unasked. And so in, in the organization, um, people will be pretend, you know, there will be the ostrich syndrome. Everybody will be pretending that everything is okay. People, the elephant in the room will remain the elephant in the room. The leader would not develop the courage to broach the subject. That will bring some positive feedback in terms of how to deal with that situation. And so 
there may be somebody in the team who may be underperforming for fear of being vulnerable. The leader would not, maybe the leader may be related with that person in some way. And so he or she would turn a blind eye to that situation. And so everybody would be pretending. And this would, would, would affect productivity all because we are avoiding the tough conversations in the, in, within the uh, team. The second consequence is this. Instead of acknowledging fears, organizations, and I put churches because that is my domain, organizations spend unreasonable amount of time and resources spinning on desirable behaviors. You know, it's, it is said that he that is now need fear no fall. If an organization, if a leader projects a persona of perfection and his, his obvious fault begins to show, then the organization must spend, um, what's the word? Unreasonable amount of money to begin to manage the scandal which may have hit the organization. For example, and let me go to my church roots. If a minister, if a preacher, if a pastor who does not want to be vulnerable in facing his or her own shortcomings, but goes on a spree of presenting a pristine image in the public's eye, if that minister is caught in a scandal, the church must spend unreasonable amount of money to, to keep the image and to maintain the image of the minister and the organization. Imagine if this minister was willing to be vulnerable and his presentation, his preaching, always projected a vulnerable posture in other words, he doesn't present himself as somebody who is infallible, who is beyond sin. If people know you, that you admit that you have the capacity, when that eventually happens, you court their sympathy and empathy. They are able to forgive you without you doing so much. But if you don't want to acknowledge your fears, your potential pitfalls, and when it happens in your face, you must spend unreasonable, unconscionable amount of time and resources to maintain your false sense of, 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 of I'm, I'm not finding your false sense of perfection. Third, lack of vulnerability results in lack of trust and empathy. Now, as someone who works with young people, I want leaders to know that the postmodern generation can sniff hypocrisy a mile away. If you are somebody who is putting up a false appearance and does not want to be vulnerable, if you are telling people what you are not, people will not trust you. They wouldn't tell you because they will know that what you are saying is not true. The, the image you are presenting is false. And they will not trust you and they will not empathize with you. In the same way in an organization, if a leader is always presenting a macho persona, a, 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 a pristine image, people will not trust you because human nature is the same. And human problems are the same. People know that they have fears. They, are, they have struggles. And you, you are a leader. You are not God. You are not omnipotent. You have all these things. They know that you are only, you are only putting on a false appearance. And so they will not trust your words. And they will not empathize with you in any way. Even if you need help, they wouldn't mind you, as they say. And so lack of vulnerability in a leader's um, repertoire of skills prevent him from 
accessing the trust and empathy of the people he or she works with. Fourth, diminishing smart risk-taking creativity and innovation. When a leader is unwilling to be vulnerable, that leader is unwilling to connect with people that would have creative and innovative ideas. You, you know, you may know that this is a risk, but there could be people in the organization who could provide you with ideas that would make the risk worth taking. But because of your lack of vulnerability, you will starve your organization of creativity and innovation. Five, age inappropriate coping strategies in relation to the experience of setbacks, disappointment, and failures. You see, when people are unwilling to be vulnerable, when setbacks occur, when disappointments occur, when failures occur, they don't know how to deal with it appropriately because their mindset, their posture is that they are able to achieve everything. And when reality hits them that you are not, and these things can happen, failures can happen, they don't know how to deal with it. And so they engage in all manner of unethical means in dealing with setbacks. They would either blame others, re refuse to take responsibility, or maybe hide these realities and pretend that nothing like that has happened. And so they keep skeletons in their, in, their, in their boxes, all because of the lack of vulnerability. Six, there is inordinate use of shaming and blaming. Leaders that tend to blame others tend to use a lot of shaming strategies are people who do not want to be vulnerable. Because if I am vulnerable, I don't mind saying that, sorry, this is my fault. But if I don't want to be vulnerable, I would always have to find somebody to blame. And there is always a declining capacity for accountability and learning. Leaders who do not learn vulnerability do not know how to be accountable. They don't, they do not have, they don't learn from their mistakes because to them, a mistake is never a mistake. They will say that every mistake is a new style because they don't want to, they want to distance themselves from the reality that even though they tell themselves that they are perfect, they are not. And so they do not hold themselves accountable for their failures and the failures of others. And they do not learn from, um, from, from, from situations. They rather shame others or blame others. Seven, when there is lack of vulnerability in leadership, there is a declining capacity for conversations about issues concerning diversity and inclusivity for fear of getting it wrong. And so in organization, there are um, simmering levels of uh, ethnocentrism and tribalism. But because leaders do not want to be vulnerable, they will never broach the subject. They rather hide their heads in the sand and pretend that everything is okay. In churches, issues of homosexuality, issues of sexual abuse, as we see in some churches, because of the image they want to project, they are unable to deal with them. And so these tensions um, um, subsist for a long time and it wreaks havoc on, on the organization and on the church. Eight, I don't know whether I'm counting correctly, but lack of vulnerability also results in a quick fix men mentality, leading to the pursuit of ineffective or unsustainable solutions. If leaders do not want to be vulnerable, they would always be in a hurry to find a stopgap solution. Because when they allow a problem to subsist, they are afraid that their, their members, their team would say that 
they are incompetent. And to avoid that kind of emotional exposure, they rather engage in quick fixes, as we see in our political leadership constantly. Because our politicians do not want to be vulnerable. And so they engage in, in, in um, quick fixes. And so solutions are ineffective and un unsustainable. They do not engage in disciplined exploration for trusted solutions to problems. You know, disciplined exploration would suggest honest disclosure. That team, we are struggling with this issue. And so we need to explore for resources that are able to help. They don't want to. Leaders who lack vulnerability will not be honest and open about challenges they are facing. But that would have been the way to find trusted solutions. Organizations, organizational values are shallow and not focused on smart values because the leaders would not move outside of themselves to find deep values, to discuss, to consult, to engage, to brainstorm to find these deep values. They only resort to their shallow mind to come up with shallow values. Lastly, when leadership lack vulnerability, there is a perfectionistic orientation that results in fear and keeps people from learning and growing for fear of shaming and or blaming. You see, human beings are flawed. Leaders are flawed. We have uh, shortfalls. And so if you lack vulnerability and present that, that orientation, the net effect is that you become afraid because of the unrealistic standards you have set for yourself. If you want to appear perfect, you know, it's unrealistic. And you have to engage some of these things to blame others and to shame others to keep that um, going. And so these are the 10 consequences of a lack of leadership vulnerability. If you flipped it, if, you, if leaders were to be vulnerable, this can be flipped and will become a positive kind of thing for the organization. Now, practicing vulnerability, and this is uh, some basic ideas. We can, we can have further discussions on this. Share your story. How do you, how do you practice vulnerability? Sh share your story. You see, the life of every leader is not linear. There are highs and lows. And so once you are honest about sharing the story of your, of your evolution, with all the highs and the lows, when you become comfortable about talking about your fears and your, and your failures and your struggles, together with your successes, you learn vulnerability. Share your story and do not leave and do not paint your, or do not embellish your, your story. Say it as it is. It helps you in developing the skill of being vulnerable. Second, increase self-awareness. Get to know yourself, who you are. Why? Because who we are is how we lead. If you have a tendency to be secretive, to be, uh, to have, when you have a perfectionistic orientation, that is going to figure in your, or feature in your leadership style. And so the more self-aware you become, the more likely you take opportunities to change certain and traits that are undesirable in relation to vulnerability. Intentionally engage the tough conversations. Put yourself out there, as they say. Test yourself. Broach the subject. Expose yourself emotionally, because that is how you would learn from it, so that you know how to deal with with, with the difficult, tough conversations in the organization. 
Lastly, learn and become comfortable with saying, I don't know. My, my brothers and sisters, my seniors in leadership, saying that you don't know doesn't make you ignorant. I tell you, it buys you the trust and empathy of people. When, when a, a team members know that their leader is, is honest, is, is sincere, they run to their defense and support. You are likely to get your team members working extra hard to show up your, your shortfalls because they know you are, you'll be honest about it. If you present an all-knowing posture, you kill the creativity and the loyalty in the team you work with. Be comfortable saying, I don't know, but I'll find out. I don't have an idea, but I'll look into it. Be comfortable. I want to conclude with this, this um, quote from uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Velf, the 26th president of the United States. He says, it is not the critic who counts, not the man or woman who points out how the strong man or woman stumbles or whether the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who at the best knows in the end triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, or if, if she fails, at least fails whilst daring greatly. Why did I put this quote? Because we do not want to be vulnerable because of our fear of the critic. But we must know that it is not the critic, the critic who counts, but it is you and your, your output. So thank you very much. I hope these were helpful. And I've added um, a reference for your further reading. Um, I would end here and and revert to Brahim. All right, all right, all right. That was indeed very, very insightful. I took a lot of notes also um, from the presentation and great, great, great ideas and completely you know, different dimension to the subject of vulnerability. Thank you so much, Frank, uh, for, for that presentation. I can see lots of comments already. Uh, so take a breath and whilst I go through some comments and then we'll come back to you uh, to comment on the comments or to share further thoughts on some of the ideas that are coming up. All right, so uh, we have... Uh, uh isaac tete join us later christopher joined us all right jim Orton uh also joined us watching from ucc campus uh catherine has made a lot of contributions so we'll come back uh, to some of the comments catherine has put up um she, she says for example crying is a sign of strength um she's excited he says, um, you know, he says so many things I'll come back to. We have Prince Samuaku here. Willie Gle is here. Thank you for coming. Mami is here with us. Um, we have Ebenezer Niyama here. Um, Catherine made some uh, suggest answers to your question that you asked about the qualities of leaders. She said the qualities that will come up will be courage, connection authenticity vision so those are normally qualities that come up and not vulnerability elkana from tanzania thank you very much uh the confidence is here um and christopher says uh, the traits of leader include self-control emotional intelligence among others so um, already you have like six, and Catherine loves the presentation uh, about being vulnerable. Makes her 
she feels much better laughing at herself um and yeah so let's come to some of the points she makes i admire leaders who have the confidence to speak about their fears um and she says she lost brainy brown she says um she's comfortable he says oh yes i'm comfortable saying i don't know <laughs> okay and uh, she says i'm sure sam can attest to that <laughs> yes i agree uh as i always ask him for help obviously uh, as i do also we support each other and Catherine says my view is that it is only leaders with healthy self-esteem uh where their identity is not derived from external views all right so um some added points for 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 mm -hmm. us uh jerry says great insights and um Catherine loves it okay she had a few other points i wanted to pick up it says fixed mindset versus growth mindset so if you don't want to be vulnerable you don't want to change uh please don't rush you love this inside <laughs> okay all right um okay there were some other points he says wow ostrich syndrome and elephant in the room deep how these things can hold us back all right your floor says um i think she's trying to comment on Catherine's comments all right people with small people can smell hypocrisy he says Albert Donko is here. He says, golden nuggets for healthy leaders. Prince Samuakun says, the great leaders are not the strongest. They are the ones who are honest about their weaknesses. All right. Um, okay. And I think, uh, all right. Good, good, good. Okay. So, um, Araba Amoesi is here. He says, unsustainable quick fixes, especially with human resource issues, uh, end up hurting whole organizations in the long run because they create a sense of unfairness. So maybe you want to comment on that also. Kwame Asien from the US says, Ayuko or Sofa Frank, we really need courageous leaders like you to demand consistency and accountability from leaders. True leaders must be reminded that they must call spade a spade. Of course, they should all be done in the spirit of love. Finally, you are right. We must not underestimate how brilliant today's youth are. The youth with more access to information today than before. Okay, watching closely dr kwami asian all right uh is that your twin brother you don't know. <laughs> he, he's <laughs> a mentor okay he's a, one of your mentors araba moesi absolutely agrees with you this presentation is on point thank you so much uh people love it uh gideon upon says learning a lot what would be the downside of vulnerability i think we've we've gone through that um johannes great presentation yao uh catherine this is deep kwame uh i must call a spade a spade okay araba vulnerability always gets you the help you need it does not change your name or your title mm -hmm. all right cynthia martin since this great presentation uh we have a lot of recommendation i'm looking for a question Deep presentation, Ebenezer says insightful presentation, Princess, great presentation, Gideon, more than helpful. Thanks for the insightful presentation. Lord says brilliant presentation, vulnerability opens the door for innovation. Teofilo says being vulnerable doesn't mean you are weak leader, very deep. All right, big thanks from Wavo in Togo, Teofilos. Vulnerability equals innovation and development. All right. So, um, yeah, I would say admitting and acknowledging one's vulnerability is a sign. It's not a sign of weakness. It is actually the opposite. That's what emotional intelligence is about. All right. Fred Ayensu says uh, he's from Accra and Araba Ajay says, thanks for a great session. 
uh, may existing leaders and upcoming leaders learn from this. All right. So there was there was really no question, but Frank, maybe you want to comment on those things. Uh, but my question will be: At what point, you know, does a leader have to, you know, hide his fears? I mean, because look, you cannot just go out there. Let's. I'm just going to be practical. For example, today we know the economy of our country is 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 in trouble. The, the, the finance minister has said that if you don't get uh, e levy, you're heading for a disaster. Well, some of us don't believe that. Uh, but others are saying we should go to the IMF. And our leaders are saying, no, 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 we don't want to go to IMF because we know that we, know, we took a position against this. I mean, if we go there, we're going to. So, what should our leaders do? Should they come and throw their hands in the air and say, guys, we can't do it when the opposition is waiting to kill them. At what point should you limit voicing out your vulnerability? At what point do you have to manage it so that, you know, <laughs> um, so that would be my question as you comment on the others. And then I'm sure that I have more questions, but. Uh, um, you, you know me that I'm not so much of a political person and, and, but, I'm I'm changing, but you know you 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 gave me a book to read, and it's about leadership and values. If a leader is leading based on his or her values, that leader has little or no hesitation in being vulnerable, because being vulnerable is just being truthful about yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses, and so. The challenge with our political leadership is that it is not based on values. They, they say what they have to say just to win vote, votes, whether what they are saying is true or not. And so that is what the challenge uh, uh, becomes for them. If they admit that they, they, um, they can't do what they said they, have, they, they will do, it's they are afraid that they are going to lose votes and lose the confidence of the people. And so they have to keep on lying uh, to us. And and it a, 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 a disaster. So what I would suggest is this. The downside of vulnerability, in my view, is that I don't know whether this is a, a downside, but the point is people are going to love you for your sincerity. People are going to, and when people see that you are sincere, they would mass to your aid and support you. People would empathize with you. Now, this is not a good example, but you know that in the West, when people come on TV and admit that they are this, they are sexual orientation, they have a lot of people, you know, who should not be supporting them, them supporting them. But because that is the nature of vulnerability. It, it, it induces the humanity of people to come to your aid, to support you. And so I don't think there is, a, well, I'm yet to discover any downside to being vulnerable. You, it, it makes you authentic and there's nothing that beats authenticity. So, now, Frank, mm -hmm. let me give another example and let's see if um, this also works. I mean, you're leading a business. You mm -hmm. have employees. Mm -hmm. Things are not going well. Mm -hmm. um, and if you come out and say things are not going well, they're mm -hmm. going to jump the boat. You don't mm -hmm. want to lose your employees. So mm -hmm. what do you do? Do you just have to come and just tell them, guys, things are not going well, so... What do we do? How do you handle it? Brahim, that, that I would answer your question with a question. Do you also want to work with people who are truly honest and loyal to you or people who are with you for what they get from you? So what you see as a fear could end up helping you discover the true core of people who believe in your vision and who are willing to stick with you through rain or high water. And so... 
if if you became honest with them, you will probably find somebody who will come to you, boss. I know there's this this way of resuscitating this business. I can take you to this man who can lead you to get uh, some support of that sort. So I think we must not worry about those who who would you know reveal their true identity. We must we must focus on what we stand to gain by being honest. We should not allow fear to overcome us and lead us not to do the right thing. Okay, good. There are a few points coming up here. Um, and Catherine is admit, agreeing with you. He says he lost your point. He says uh, they should just admit, I mean, for with the first question, they said they should just admit it and get the people behind them. And he says you will want to lose the ones who will join the boat in, mm -hmm. in the second instance. And Richard Asante Boche is asking, should a leader consider the follower before expressing his vulnerability as in the case of politicians some followers rather use a leader's vulnerability and escalate the problem so so yes you cannot just be that naive and say that just go out there and spill all the beans um how do you do it do, do you have to look at your leaders your followers is there a timing to wait? Is there the right situations in which you should communicate the vulnerability? You know, yes. I mean, yeah, yes. There is the you must you must ready the people's minds and hearts for what you are going to tell them. Um, but and so you must manage the information without withholding any fact or truth from them. That that is. Um, um, that is true, but people's reaction to what you are going to say should not stop you from saying what you must say. Because if we look at our political history, because Richard is coming from a political context, I tell you, if our politicians have been honest and sincere with us, we may not be where we are at this point. The cycle of using or fearing what people would do is what has kept us in this vicious cycle they are afraid that they are going to lose votes but and that the um the opposition now is going to use their weaknesses you know there are people in this country who are very intelligent and will see through the machinations of political parties and still support uh, um, uh, parties that are sincere and, and honest with them. And All so right. I, I think that we should not play on the downplay the intelligence of, of the masses. Sometimes we think of them as weaklings. And so we think weak people cannot handle truth. But I yeah. think that is an insult to the intelligence of people. All right. Thank you so much. And Catherine, I agree. Vulnerability is not naivety. Now, there are a few more questions coming up. We, we learned so much from the questions and answers, so don't go away. But at this point, I don't know if Kofi is there. We want to um, share with you the last time next week we are starting our um, growth journey, the third leg of our growth journey, the third cohort. Uh, we have a few spaces. So if you want to join the growth journey, um please register if you share the link register now and we will send you a copy of john c maswell's the 15 invaluable laws of growth and we are starting the journey on tuesday 5 p.m and it's only 1500 for 15 weeks of learning uh where you're going to have a lot of exercises and by the end of the day you're going to have a plan for your life the rest of your life how you want to grow and the things you want to do with your life. Um, it's going to be powerful. We're going to have a lot of sharing as we have had in the previous sessions. And I can tell you at the end of each session, I have people telling me some, when we're starting, we thought it was too expensive, but we see that there is so much, you should be charging more for this, this program. It's only a thousand five hundred, which is like hundred cities, a week of learning so 
join. Don't think that you are spending too much. As before we say, sometimes we know the price of everything, not the value of it. The value that you're going to get from this growth journey is way beyond the price that we are, we are giving to you. So please go ahead and join the growth journey. Uh, we have a few more spaces. It's, it's closing at 15 people, but uh, we have, uh, I think, a few more, maybe three or four people more to join. So go ahead and join uh, so we can start with you. All right. So uh, a few more last questions for you, mm -hmm. Frank, and then we can... Uh, we can we've taken a lot of your time already but we are learning great things this is a good subject to discuss how do you align vulnerability to the mantra that honesty is not cheap and not everyone trusts uh that not everyone that would value it so this is from uh, linda akutia is saying how do you align vulnerability to this mantra that honesty is not cheap so that's the first question. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question. How do you, okay, I think it's the same question uh, which came from two sources. Araba Ajay, I believe leaders must also know who their followers are before becoming vulnerable. Okay, so that's uh, another dimension. You mentioned that, but uh, uh, Catherine said it's too cheap. You should change uh, you should charge more. <laughs> All right, uh, Catherine. Okay, so I hear you. Uh, I will charge more. <laughs> okay, but for now, we are not increasing. We want to encourage everybody to be part of this. This is a huge, 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 huge uh, opportunity for all of us. So we want to make sure everybody joins. Okay, um, Lord says, can you draw the line between managing scandalous information and being vulnerable with it. So I, I guess there are about two questions there. Mm -hmm. uh, one from Linda, how do you align vulnerability to the mantra that honesty is not cheap and not everyone will value it? And Lord's question is, can you draw the line between managing scandalous information and being vulnerable with it? All right. Um, to um, uh, our sister Linda, how do you align vulnerability to the mantra? Yes. Um, not everybody can, can not, not everybody would value you being honest with that person. And, and so, yes, you must, you must be circumspect in terms of who you become vulnerable to. That is one leg of the issue. The other leg, I think, is that being vulnerable is not for the next person. The, being vulnerable is for yourself, for your own values, and for the possibility of increasing your leadership currency or your currency of influence. So, yeah, so it's a very delicate trade off that you must try to achieve in my experience people i was going to say refuse people are reticent about being vulnerable because of their per the, their perception of people's reaction and so the question is who loses in such a situation and so i agree not everybody would be would would value or is worth you being vulnerable to but remember who benefits from it so that you don't um you don't they ha there is this adage in akan that you should not follow the fly to bruise your soul so don't lose what you stand to gain based on someone else's reaction my my philosophy is this control what you can control and allow what you cannot control to go we we cannot control the reaction of people we can only control our response to to those things and so what i'm trying to say is that you think about how to achieve a trade-off a balance between not giving um, pearls to pigs, but giving 
um, it out at the right time. That's what I want to say. And now, um, um, Lord Asante Ford, your, your question is, is, is quite difficult. And so I want to be vulnerable here and say that I, I do not have a, an answer in mind for you now. Maybe I can think about it later so we can have um, um, a discussion on it. Um, managing scandalous information and being vulnerable. It's it's a hard one. So let me practice my own my own um, virtue and say let me think about it and get back to you. All right. Thank you so much, and we really appreciate you being vulnerable and uh, actually living what you are teaching us at this point. Um, so so uh, Lord, actually, uh, it's it it is true. I mean, for every organization, I have worked in a bank um for 20 years i've worked in the financial sector for 25 years when there is a fraud in the bank okay you don't go out there and announce that hey, people have hacked into our system there is uh, people are you know stealing our money everybody i mean all your customers will disappear the next morning okay so 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 there is there is room for how you have to manage information Okay, so managing the information in a way that you are protecting the institution's interest is, is, is important. Okay, it's different from where you have, you know, actually made mistakes on a customer's account, for example, and a customer is there and you're not admitting that you've made mistakes and then the customer is upset and uh, you are trying to wiggle around like the things you said, the customer will withdraw their money immediately okay but where there's a there's a system problem and you 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 honestly go out there and say customers we are having issues here with our system we are fixing it you know but when there are there are some situations where you are better off you know rather bringing it to the technical people trying to find a solution and when you find a solution then it is easier for you to say we had these issues but we dealt with it so in a business setting there may be situations where you know you don't just you know even in in, in other political systems and in the political economy it's not every information or bad news or negative thing that you just go out and announce you have to uh, look at the effect the consequence uh, on the business on the all the stakeholders and not just your own. So that would be my take on that question. All right. So I believe we are we are doing good. And uh, um, Kwame Asian says, I think it's great virtue to expose your vulnerability. However, your truthfulness will be rewarded if and when your audience appreciate your courage and later accommodate or reward you for that rather than... Uh, yeah. Vilify you, you. Thank you so much, Kwame, uh, for that. Uh, um, so confidence, I couldn't join from the beginning, but it has been insightful. Catherine, don't follow the fly to bruise your soul. Okay, she likes that. Um, this was just amazing. I must run now. Thank you so much for all your contributions, uh, Catherine and Helen. Uh, vulnerability is predominantly viewed as weakness within most African Africans from family to friend to colleagues. To, so how do you strike the balance? All right. Okay. So just your last comment on Helen's and then give us your closing remarks and then we will call it a day. Thank you so much. This has been really great. Well, um, Helen, you know, one of the reasons why I decided there to be vulnerable with this topic is so that we can begin to transform our society. That notion that vulnerability is a weakness has not helped us. It, it, has, it has hurt us so much so that we have a lot of square pegs in round holes. And that is what is retarding the growth of our society. And so I want to encourage you to be vulnerable, to to model it. One, one 
one reason I'm happy where the Lord has placed me in, in the campus church is this, that I get to model some of these concepts for these young people growing up so that poco a poco, little by little, we begin to shape the future of our country today. So let's be change makers. Let's model the change that we see so that um, our society would have a, a better future. And so that, that's what I would say. And it goes to um, those who uh, were online. I, I think we must, we must model this. It begins with the man in the mirror so that the younger generation would have a different perspective of what leadership is about so we can change the trajectory of, of our society. And so let's go out there and, and, and be the changes that we seek. God bless us all. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. And we want to thank everybody who has been on the call and uh, spending part of your evening with us. We always appreciate your presence. Frank, this has been very, very insightful, great presentation, great learnings. Thank you so much. And the team behind Kofi, Abigail, and uh, Mami, and the rest of the team, Thank you so much for uh, helping uh, behind the scenes and getting this done. Thank you so much for all the participants. And we thank God the Almighty for helping us through and for all the lessons that he has um, inspired us to learn from Frank and from many, many other leaders. Until next week, when we come your way again with another leader and another topic, let us have good evening and remember go to church tomorrow. God be with you. Thank you. Good night. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey.